When we came into Atlanta, we wanted our success as far as church planning to be dictated by impact and not by numerical growth. We never wanted to base success on fruitfulness, but on faithfulness to what God has called us to do. We don't feel that God has called us to plant churches, but we do believe that the model that we see in Acts is, you know, we're called to plant the gospel, that as Paul goes from town to town, and he plants the gospel and then fruit springs up from that, then you see there's this order and structure that's brought to it. We became an independent church in October uh, 2012. Our goal is to reach out first generation of Hispanics. At the beginning, I didn't have a church, nothing. So what I'm gonna do in, a, in, a, in an office? Preparing the sermon, yeah, for whom? So we need to look for them. But the Lord has been so merciful, giving us people, and we thank God for that. When I first came to Castleview Baptist Church in 2008, I saw a group of people who were thankful for their salvation, certainly wanted other people to know of that salvation, but had wrongly thought of the church's programs as the primary, if not sole, means of providing that opportunity. Programs are like training wheels. They're helpful. But the goal in Christian maturity is to eventually take the training wheels off where you can ride on your own and not be so dependent upon the structure of programs to provide outlets and opportunities and to provide the content for conversations that you could otherwise better do on your own. I think a pastor, before he's a pastor, is a Christian. Part of what I need to be doing as a Christian is engaging in relationships with those around me of people who otherwise don't know Christ. Our church was right next door to a popular bakery and breakfast spot in Atlanta. Every day I would go there, buy a cup of coffee, and ask whoever I saw what their first names were. And then I started to sit and to work at the bar and to do work there and call folks by their name. It was kind of under six to eight months of uh, trying to do that over and over and over, and that led to just tons of gospel conversation. Folks from there would come next door to the, the church, and it all just came a part of, I think, a consistent presence in one place. One of the things that the Lord put me to do is to look for our neighbors, Latinos. So I have been a driver, I have been a moving guy. I have been a handyman guy. I used to drive some guys from here to Maryland. During the trip, okay, they are in my car. They will be listening uh, Christian music and they will be listening to me. Being a pastor, doing the labor of evangelist uh, for myself, for my people, for the non-converted people. It's all connected. Build friendships. Have relationships with people in a regular, repeatable manner that upon doing so, I can begin to get to know them and ask them questions and interact with them. With perhaps even the opportunity to, to study the Bible with them. I think it's an example to the people in the church of oh, that's what it looks like. And I think that connects for our people that encourages them to go do the same as well. Sometimes I think there's an apathy that exists for the souls of the folks that we come across. It's so easy to get so wrapped up in our own worlds and to think that successful Christianity is about how well I'm not doing certain things. 
I think when people get cold in their evangelism, it's an indication they're getting cold in their understanding of their own testimony, of their own relishing of the gospel. If you just go after evangelism straight on, you, sh you could have, you should have, if only you would have, people will acknowledge that they should and you'll get a short-term response. But that's like telling a child he should use vegetables. He knows principally it's true, but at the end of the day, he would prefer a Big Mac. For a Christian to be told they should have answered, they know it's true, but at the end of the day, they just prefer to go home and watch a television show or read a book. We tried intentionally and constantly to tell them, remember, we are not better than them. We have the same kind of heart has been transformed by God. So you fan the flames on the gospel. You fan the flames on the, on the mercy of the grace of salvation in Jesus Christ. And that will produce a renewed passion towards evangelism. Judge, remember how merciful God has been with us. And let's share the gospel. We don't need to shape the gospel uh, in, in any way, because the gospel is the gospel. Man, there's nothing that we have to do to this. We don't have to add on anything. We don't have to program our way into this. We share, the gospel bears fruit, and it forms a community of folks that come together. The gospel is for sinners, Christians and non-Christians. It's the hope of heaven. The gospel speaks to the deep universals of so many cultures. Seeing the faces of that diverse crowd just continues to reaffirm that man, there is a God that can and already has reached into any and every context to draw people for himself. So that's a great encouragement to us.